So this is our like our official first class of lecture. Last time we were just providing a little bit of structure um, as far as the syllabus was concerned, as far as when we're meeting. And now we're showing Lumen Learning. This is how we enroll in Lumen Learning, course ID, enrollment key, the website. And then this is the first homework that, that, that will be due. Now, I want you to take a good look at this. I want you to skip over any word problems. So homework 1A does not have any word problems. So that's good. So everything here is fair game. Homework 2, well, homework 1B. Uh, any word problem? Oh, question 14. You don't have to do question 14, OK? So and these are B one B for one B. Yeah, you could skip over question 14. Any problems like this that, you know, looks like a physics problem or a word problem, unless I tell you to do it, don't do it. Um, so please don't you can skip over 14. I mean, if you want to do it, go ahead. Uh, but you're not required to do it. I'm not going to be giving you questions in that format. And uh let's see wait professor is it gonna affect our total grade or the composition no. of the homework if we don't do it remember um and that's a great question by the way remember i don't count um wrong answers against you i count lateness against you so if i tell you the homework is due monday this monday coming up september 5th at five o'clock and you just didn't do the homework then that's going to count against you now, let's say you get everything wrong on the homework, but that's not going to count against you because you're attempting to do the homework unless you're trying to cheat yourself. I'm not saying that you're going to do that, but if, if, if someone does cheat themselves, meaning that they just go click, 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 mini, 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 mo, then, you know, that that's also counts as homework. But then I'm going to find out because when I give you a quiz and I give you the same question, I literally the same question from the homework and you get it wrong. I'm going to be like, what's going on? You know, I, I don't get this. You get like a hundred tries per question. And um, why aren't you focusing on the homework? You know, stuff like that. Good question. Good question. Yes. Um, all right. So let's keep going. Um, homework 1C. Radicals and exponents. Uh, there are no word problems here, so that's okay. The other thing I wanted to show you was the book. The book is very important, right? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the bookie bookie. So the book is under student resources. Student resources has um, helpful websites, graphing calculators, you know, it has some good stuff. So let's take a look here at what the book looks like. So it's gonna bring you to this page here. So the cool thing about this is that, let's say you're on your phone and you download, download this as a PDF, then you could be walking around with your book as a PDF when the book is for free. I don't know how many of you have opened the book, but it's pretty cool because literally it's like a thousand pages. And the purpose of this class is not for me to read this book. So I am not going to be like opening up this book every time we have class and I'm going to start like reading. Oh, these are real numbers and I'm going to start reading to you. It's, it's a cold day in Antarctica. In fact, it's always cold day in Antarctica. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but I will be giving you examples of the topics. And this is our first topic here, real numbers. And, you and if you want to follow through um, later on, you could come back to the book and you could see examples of what real numbers, irrational numbers, and all that good stuff is. All right, so this is where we're going to start. And it's good to have this book because we're literally going to be using it. And um, like I said before, the cool thing about the $25 is that 
you get the book included. You could download the book. You could use the book as many times as you want. And um, it's, it's a great resource, I, I found it. These are all the topics that we're gonna be doing during the semester. So you see, we definitely have a lot. Uh, right now we're just on real numbers. Then we're gonna move on to polynomials, but right now we're gonna concentrate on this. So that's, that's my segue. So any questions before I start? No questions. Okay, no problem. All right. So Elizabeth Rios. Yes, sir. Are you here? Was yeah, you, was I'm, you, was you, I'm having trouble getting to the book. <laughs> Go ahead. Go really? Ahead. Oh, okay. Try, try, try. Uh, but let me know if you still have problems and you can't get in. So I um I called your name because I wanted to show you the screen because you're gonna help me out right now. The reason why I'm using my Word document now is because my iPad is not working. And normally I use my iPad for everything and I would be writing. But yeah. uh, because my iPad is not working, I'm not going to cancel class because my iPad is not working. My, I can still <laughs> use my I can still use my voice and I can still use what I have here and then we could talk about it, right? Yes, sir. And continue. Because, you know, <laughs> you got to get your money's worth here, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. All okay. right. So real numbers consist of all of these, right? Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. And if you want to follow in the book, the... Um, that would be page, let's see where we're at here with the real numbers. I think I just passed it. It starts off at page one. <laughs> starts at page one, and then it gets into the nutty gritty, and into the nitty gritty, right? Page two, page three, right? But I'm not gonna be going over this like that. So can anybody tell me some examples of natural numbers? Anybody? One, two. one, two, sorry. Okay, Rainbow no, it's good. Okay. All right, so I have a set, right? I'm gonna call this S set. And inside that set, you said what numbers are there? Part of the natural numbers? One, one two. two, three, four. Okay, okay. All right, that's good. Now, do you see a zero here? No. 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 That is very important, guys, because natural numbers do not include zero, but whole numbers do have a zero, okay? And that's, that's going to be the first question on that quiz that I'm going to give you in two weeks. One of those questions is, hint, hint, what is the difference between a natural number and a whole number? And you're going to tell me what? It doesn't include zero. That's right. <laughs> Isn't this cool? I mean, you get the answers to the questions in class. That's if you come to class, right? <laughs> All right. So now integers. So what are the differences between integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers? Anybody? They include negatives and positives. Ah, yes. And also zero. So negative three, negative two, right? Negative one, uh, zero one two three and so on and so forth right so you see the differences here right let's highlight this nonsense i hope everybody could see that on their laptop or phone what i'm doing should i make it a little bigger yeah make it a little bigger please make it a little bigger okay Make it a little bigger. Okay, that's good. This is what happens when your iPad doesn't work. Sucks. I got to do this, but it's okay. We're getting through it. All right. So rational numbers. Let's talk about rational numbers. Now, a rational number is a fancy word also known as a fraction. Okay. So later on, when you have 
something called a rational expression, you're basically um, rational expression. You're you have a fraction that has um, with variables, right? But we're right now we're just sticking to rational numbers, all right? I'm just giving you a sneak peek, right? Like at the movies. I haven't gone to the movies, but rational expression is what's going to come later on. And that's going to have fractions with variables. So rational numbers are also known as a fraction. So what are those fractions? Well, they could be expressed as uh, P over Q, right? Whereby Q, Q cannot be zero. Why can't Q be zero? Because it would be then a whole number. Well, what happens when we have a zero in the denominator for any fraction? It's the quantity. The quantity is what, zero? Uh, you're dancing around it. You're close. It's, it's undefined. not really a fraction. Oh, exactly. It's undefined. it's undefined. So because it's undefined, we cannot have a zero. So if we have an example such as two over three or one over three, is this a rational number? Yeah, it was good. It's valid because there's no zero in the denominator. So this right here, this is an example of a rational number. All right, so let's do a little recap. Let's see what's going on. So natural numbers, they're counting numbers, one, two, three, four. Whole numbers start with zero. Integers have negative and zero. And so basically integers have whole numbers and natural numbers, right? Rational numbers are fractions. Rational expression, later on, we'll, we'll define that like with a variable, right? So like if we have 2x over 3x, right? That would be a rational expression because now we have a variable in the, in the numerator and we have a variable in the denominator. But that's a rational expression. A rational number does not have any variables. It's just a regular fraction, okay? It's like some people say cars, right? And other people say automobile. They mean the same thing, right? But, you know, they're like, oh, I take an automobile. Mm, okay, well, good for you. We take cars, but it's okay. No problem. All right, irrational numbers. So what are, what are, what are some examples of some irrational numbers? I catch up with you. <laughs> huh? You said, what's up, what's up? No, I said, I'm trying to catch up with you. I haven't had math in a long time. <laughs> nah, no problem. Let, let's see if the let's see if the book has it. Let's see if I know, yeah, should... I found the book. So now I'm I'm, I'm on the page. Yeah, so the book, <laughs> the book, the book has some examples right here. Radical the, differentiate, differentiating rational from irrational numbers. So what's a what's a what's a we know a rational number is a fraction, right? So D is a is a rational number, B is a rational number, right? Is is a a rational or an irrational number? Rational. Why? Because it's radical and not a fraction. Is irrational, you mean? Oh yeah, sorry, irrational. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, no problem. It's all good. So yeah. we're using we're we're using the book right now to help us here. Uh, normally I wouldn't be doing this. I would be just doing my iPad. So irrational numbers are essentially numbers such as that repeat themselves. So you guys know pi, right? Mm -hmm. Pi is 3.14. Let me see if I could put a symbol in here, insert. Equation. No, this thing's playing hard to get here. Yeah, I don't see pi. I'm actually losing my eyesight looking at this. Uh, okay, but pi, you guys know, is 3.14, whereby the 3.14, it's gonna be continuous, there is pi, right? So this pi here is equal to 3.14, and it's gonna be continuous, you know? So this would be an irrational number, okay? Also, any, 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 um, any radical would be an um, irrational number as well. 
So, 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 so. So, is an irrational number a real number? Yes. Good, yes. good, 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 good. You didn't fall for it. Ha. Ah. <laughs> so, real numbers include everything. Real numbers include rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. It includes everything. So don't fall any rational numbers, okay? Don't fall into the into the mistake of saying, "Oh, no, 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 no." You know, this 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 is not this is not um, a real number. All of these are real numbers, but please know the differences between them, okay? That you will be um, asked. Um, questions on. All right, so that brings us to to the number line. So let me let me see. I think I could draw with this. I'm not too good at drawing, but uh, I'm gonna draw. All right, so I'm gonna draw. Actually, I think Word has. Um, Can anybody see that red line? Yes. Yes. OK, good. So let's just pretend that on that red line, we got negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. Oops, that's a negative and a negative, right? It's no bueno. No bueno. I heard somebody say mal hombre. <laughs> One, uh, two, three, four, five. So we're going to spread these out because it's supposed to be in the middle, right? All right. So here we have a number line. It's not the best number line but it'll do. So here we have negative six. Oh, I should put positive five, positive six, right? Let's make this a little balance. There you go. And this is the real number line. Now, this real number line is going to have Natural numbers, right? Which are one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to have whole numbers because it has a zero. It's going to have integers because it has negative values. It could have rational numbers and it could have irrational numbers, right? And how do we know that? Because isn't um, isn't three point one four between three and four? Yeah. So if I put pi right here, I'm just going to write it because it's much easier. Pi exists on the number line. And so, so <clears throat> excuse me, so does a fraction. So if I put two thirds here, that exists between zero and one because that's 0.66, right? So these are the examples I, I want to give you so you don't get confused later on when you see a number line. Let's see what the book has. Does it give you a number line? Yeah, let's start with a number line here. So here's a number line. And they give you some examples, and then they're going to ask you, classify, put them here. So all, all of these are real numbers, depending upon where they belong, right? So, that, you know, they give some good examples here. All right, so let's keep going. I feel like I'm doing my job if, I'm, if the book is, if I'm doing what the book says, right? Now, you have to be very careful with the, with the number line, because there are some values, right? I'm going to put it here. Some values are included and others are not. So, so how do you know, how do you know, how do you know what's included? How do you know, how do you know what's not included? Well, we have something called interval notation. And interval notation will tell us on a number line what will be included and what won't be included. So for instance, if I have bracket, bracket A comma B, 
let me get rid of this. Because this thing is clear. So you're like, okay, but that that that's a parentheses, right? So I'm gonna define what parentheses is. Parentheses means not included. But it exists. So if we look for an example, right? This is the border wall, right? You see the border wall? Uh, yes. Anybody see this? Yeah. So, so this is the border border down in the south, right? So, I guess if they're climbing this wall, that means America's on the other side. I don't think they're going to go try. People are trying to go somewhere else. So, this wall exists, right? Yes. But you're not supposed to be on it. So these people are by. These people, these people here, my brothers and sisters here, are violating uh, mathematical rules. Well, in this case, immigration law. So I'll give you an example of the number line. But I just wanted to show like a picture because a picture is worth a, a thousand words, right? Here's another, another wall, I think. Oh, no, this one. But this one has a hole. <laughs> so that's not good either. No. This is more. This is more like it, right? This is. Where is the wall? Okay, I'm losing track of my math here because I'm looking for pictures and they're giving me advertisements. All right, so here's the wall. So let me give you an example. So let's say the values for this problem lie between negative three two positive four so then if i look at this number line here let me just do a number line here insert a shape there you go so if i have that number line there what that means is that I have parentheses negative three, two, four. So just like this border wall that I have here in the picture on the right, I'm going to say that that border wall is only exists between negative three and four. And I am going to connect these values like that. However, negative three and four are not part of the solution. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three are part of the solution. But negative three and four are not part of the solution. Think of it like the wall. It exists, but you cannot touch it. Well, you shouldn't touch it. Um, so this is an example of interval notation expressing values that are not part of the solution to a problem, but have values in between them that will solve the problem. Later on, when we do lines um, and we do slope and we limit the lines, we're going to say, only for values of x between negative three to four is the line valid. However, negative three and negative four are not included. And these would be expressed like with open circle, like with an open circle and an open circle. But everything in between would be solid. All right. So let's keep going. So the other one is the opposite, right? The opposite of that would be negative three comma four. But instead of parentheses, we're going to use what? We're going to use brackets. So if we use brackets, it's going to be negative 3 to 4 bracket. And in this case, 
negative three and four are part of the solution. Is everyone understanding me or is somebody lost? I'm not understanding. <laughs> okay, I heard some people say that I'm good. Others said I'm lost. Who's lost? Talk to me. Like, what do you mean that it's not included? So, so not included means that I cannot use negative three as a solution to a problem that I have. So graphically speaking, if I had a line whereby negative three for X is a value, but if I have it in parentheses, that means I cannot use it. It means that I have to account for it, but it's not going to be one of the answers that I can use. I'll probably be able to use negative two. I'll be able to use negative one, zero, one, two, and three. I might even be able to use three and a half. I could use 3.9999999999, but I cannot use four. I could use negative 2.9999999999, but I cannot use negative three. That is the difference. This, this means on the top, it exists, but it's not included. But down here, when you have a bracket, the negative three and the positive four are included. Those are part of the solution. I'll All give right, you some I problems. Yeah, I'll give you some, I'll give you some problems later on when we work these. Now you could always have, so now these are all inclusive, right? So all inclusive means that negative three and negative four are not part of the solution and negative three and negative four are part of the solution. But you could also have situations where you have like a 50-50 mix, right? You could have negative three is not included, but four is. Or you could have negative three included, but four is not included, right? And the way that would work would be, um, let's go up here. So that would be parentheses negative three. And up here, I would have four bracket. And the opposite would be true, right? So here, I would have negative three included. And four is not included. When we do piecewise functions, you'll see this. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So we have different examples here, all with the number line. So this is why I was telling you the number line, a lot of people are like, yo, professor, come on, are you serious? Yo, this is like elementary school stuff here, right? It's like from grade one. No, if you don't understand this, you're going to have some serious problems later because you're going to be like not understanding what is going on. So don't ever, don't ever say that. This is why we're taking class. So it's good. Now there's also another example, right? And the other example is when you have infinity. Now, I, I don't know, do I have a symbol here for infinity that will make my life easy? Let's see if I have it. So it looks good. Let's see if I could insert a symbol. And let's see if I have infinity. Yep, there it is. Perfect. This is infinity, right? So when you have a symbol like infinity, let's say bracket four. Who could tell me why infinity has a parentheses and not uh, a bracket? Anybody? Take um, a wild guess. Isn't included. Why isn't it included? You're you're but, you're there. You're there. Uh, because the parentheses. Right, and then, but what 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 characteristic does infinity have? It doesn't have a limit. Okay. Not, okay. I, I like your words. It doesn't have a limit. 
what's another word for limit? Maybe you have many solutions, only not only one solution. Like it had you guys are all dancing around the answer, it's which undefined. is great. No, it is defined. Infinity is defined. This is why it has a parentheses. Because it it has a why can't it be a bracket? And you said limit. And I like that word limit. Because look, what would be the limit for four here? Because it has a bracket. It would be four, right? I can't go any further, right? That's it, right? It's a full stop for four, right? It's a full stop here for four as well. Here, it says four exists, but four is not part of the solution. Down here, four is a full stop. Four is four exists on the last problem, but I cannot use it as a solution. So for this one here, the reason why infinity doesn't have a bracket is because the gentleman just said it, but he, he used a different word. He used limit. Infinity does not stop. Do you know where infinity stops? Anybody. If you do, call me. We'll write a paper and we'll become billionaires. <laughs> we'll become filthy rich. Infinity does not stop. You don't know where infinity ends. Like Buzz Lightyear, to infinity and beyond. Right? There's no, there's no end to it, right? So infinity will always have a, bra um, a parenthesis, not a bracket. I'm trying to see if there's any questions there. It's endless. Okay, yes, I like that. Actor, very good. Yes, very good. It's endless. I like that. It is endless. So it's good. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the book. I'm not trying to follow the book, but I'm trying to see if I'm following it. Oh, see, look. We did all of this. Look at that. We did all these pages and I didn't even have to read it, right? Isn't that cool? This is why I get paid the mega bucks, right? This is awesome. All right, so we did all of this. Um, so now they're trying to do what? Oh, they want you to do some operations. Okay, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and subtraction. Okay, we can do that. Let's, but I wanna, I wanna do something more important than PEMDAS right now. I wanna, I wanna learn about Union and uh, intersection. Let me see if I could find union or intersection here. Do they have union? Really? Union. Oh, here it is. Union interval note. This is what we just went over, guys. Page 143. Interval notation. The reason why I like introducing it now is because you're going to need, need it later. All right, inequalities, no. It doesn't go into union. Oh, I'll find it. Anyway, we need to go over it. All right, so right now we're going to jump into union. So this is topic two, right? Union and intersection. All right. So let's talk about union and intersection. Can anybody tell me here right now? I, I know last time there was a young lady who said, oh, I'm married and I have a, I have a daughter. I forgot her name. Um, how, many, how many of you um, are married here? Is there like a show of hands here or can I see the show of hands? Does divorce count? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'm divorced too. So don't, 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 don't feel like you're alone. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. So I, I didn't hear from any, anybody else. Uh, we only have one person married. Everybody else is single here or divorced. Nobody wants to say, oh, okay, you, you're so shy. I'm not shy. All right, so I'm divorced. So when you have a union, 
A union is equal to a marriage. It basically means what's yours is mine, and what is mine is yours, right? That's what a union means, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not here to advocate <laughs> one thing or another, but mathematically speaking, that's what it means, right? We're going to create um, one whole, your piece and my piece, right? So I'm trying to see if I can copy this so I can just paste it there so you can see it. I'm going to pray that this paste. Yeah, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, this is good. Guys, don't get excited. I'll get excited here with the color. So this is what a union is, right? A union, you're A, she's B, or he's A and he's B, or she's A and she's B. And then you join together and then you have this. You have a union. You have two sets, right? And, they're, and they share everything. But if you're smart, you will do a prenup, prenuptial agreement. Now, in a prenuptial agreement, you're saying to the other person, you know, I love you. I love you, baby. And you love me. And because I love you, I need to protect what's yours and I need to protect what's mine. And then we have to protect what's ours. Whatever we get in this marriage is ours. That means we both put energy, money, time, sacrifice to get it. But prior to me meeting you, everything that I have is mine. The Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the nice. F-Type the Jaguar, <laughs> that's all me. The, you know, the, uh, the Hamptons house that you love swimming in my pool in, that's my house because I had that before I met you. You know that private airplane that, I, that we travel the world on? That's my plane. That's not your plane. I got that before you. And then everything you have, like Beyonce, you know, Beyonce, she got all those contracts, all those millions of dollars. That's all hers. Yeah. Right? But now when they get married, Whatever they achieve together in their enterprise, that's theirs. So in a prenuptial agreement, you're going to create what is called an intersection. All right, put that in there. So this is me here, A, and this is my significant other, B. And I tell her, yo, you want to get married? We're going to do a prenup. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. As opposed to the first sentence I wrote, what's yours is mine and what is mine is yours, right? This is a union. And there's actually nothing wrong with this. How, how many of you guys watch 90 Day Fiance on uh, Discovery? I love that show. Nobody? Yo, you guys need to watch that. You <laughs> need to watch that. That is some serious drama, especially when you bring up all of these ideas of union and intersection. Some people get very offended with this intersection stuff. They're like, oh, what do you mean? I feel like uh, we're running a business. I love you and you love me. Well, guess what? When you get divorced <laughs> and you go in front of the judge. It turns you, ugly. They, they treat you like a business. <laughs> so why not do it as a business to begin with, with, you know, benefits involved, of course, uh, then pretending that it's like this magical thing from Lord of the Rings and uh, House of Thrones or House of Dragon, which is not because, you know, in reality, you got to take care of me and I got to take care of you. So, you know, let's let's do some financials. 
So this is an intersection. So now you guys are going to be like, okay, professor, you are talking a lot of trash here, but you ain't teaching us no math. <laughs> and I will satisfy those that <laughs> talk shade about me right now by giving you some math to think about. One, three, five, and eight. One, three, five, and eight. So I have this set here. Um, let me see if I could zoom in on this. And you see the intersection is uh, denoted as like a ups upside down. Uh, it looks like an N, right? While the union here looks like a U, right? A union B, so everything's together. And then this is A intersection B. All right, so let's zoom in on this so we can see it. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. Oh, hold on. I got to pause the recording. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So like I was saying before, with the uh, intersection and the union, we're now going to see some sets here. So we have the A set. We got the B set. The B set is 3, 5, and 7. And the uh, C set is, oops. The C set is two, four, six, and eight. Two, four, six, and eight. So now these are the three sets that you have. But now you have some problems. So the first problem is A union, A intersection B. That's the first problem. Then the next problem is A union B. And then the last problem is, well, how am I going to do the last problem if well, it's going to be up there? OK, hold on. Enter the table. Boom. There you go. And then the last problem here is going to be what? B intersection parentheses A union C. OK, so for what what numbers will I have when I have when I have um, A intersection B? So these are my sets. I have three sets, right? I have the A set, I have the B set, and I have the C set. When I have A intersection B, what values will I have? Look at the values. Anybody? I'm going to pick on people. Three and five. Who said that? Talia. Talia. All right. So Talia says the values that you're going to have are three and five. So I'm going to click on Arab Ahmed. Arib Ahmed, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yo, what up? What up, homie? How's everything? Do you I'm agree? Good, man. How are you? Chilling, chilling, chilling. You know, I'm, I'm right here chilling like a villain strawberry filling. So do you agree with her? Do you do you do you agree that the result between the intersection, the prenuptial agreement, only that's what's common to both is three and five? Do you agree with that, Ahmed? Uh, wait, can you repeat that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? How you doing? Everything all right? You chilling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like I'm not sure whether I disagree or agree because I'm confused myself. Sure. So who wants to help Ahmed? Charles Ajabor. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. Charles, tell me why you agree, my man. Because both of them, both A and B, both have three and five. There you go. Did you get that, Ahmed? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. So the what's common to both A and B is three and five. One, eight, and seven. They're unique to that to, to themselves. So basically. They came to to this 
situation having one and eight together, and then during the marriage, they got three and five, and then B only had seven. That's the way you got to look at that. All right, no problem. So let's click on Denise Del Carmen. Denise Del Carmen, are you here? This is I'm KTU here. calling you. 103.5. We got tickets for Bad Bunny for next year. So for tickets for Bad Bunny for next year, whether you like him or not, A, Union B, what are the values? I'm going to say... Is it going to be two values? Which those which values do you think it is? I think two and six. So remember, union is a marriage, right? So when you do a union, what's yours is mine, and what's yours is what's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours, right? So we're basically putting everything together. So want to think about that? Can I? So it be all the numbers. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I would say I would say like two and eight. You're gonna say what? Two and eight. Two and eight. Where are you getting two from? A has no two. Uh, B got no two. One, three, oh. five, seven, eight. Seven and eight. Yeah. One, three, five, five, seven, and eight. All right. Do we all agree on this? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, it's true because A has one, three, five, and eight, and B has three and five. We're not going to repeat those again. And the only thing we're going to add here is seven. So here, the, they got the whole enchilada here, right? All right. They basically did a guacamole. They did uh, cilantro, onions, and avocado, and a little bit of hot peppers in there, and salt and peppers, and lemon. Oh, my God, I'm Me getting hungry. hungry. I'm getting hungry. Ay, que rico. Okay. So now let's, lo let's look at the bad one, the, the last one. So whenever you have parentheses, people, you always do what's inside the parentheses first, okay? Always do what's in parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, it says A union C. So we're going to look at A here, and we're going to look at C here. So the union between A and C is what? Eight. All the numbers included. So oh, let's yeah. do that. So the numbers for A union C, well, A has one, has three, has five, and eight. And what does C have? Well, C three, has... Four and six. Right. Two, four... Uh, six. It also has eight, but we're not going to repeat it. So the answer for A union C is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, now we could do B intersection, B intersection, all these numbers. So what is, what, what, what does B have that all these numbers in parentheses have that is common to both? Three and five. Three, five. That's it. So my final answer here is three and five. This is Hold hard. On. Hold on. What did you do for the A union C? You took all the numbers that wasn't repeated? I took all the numbers for A, one, three, five, and eight. And then I put all the numbers that C has, but I did not repeat eight because eight is already included with A. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to do B intersection C. Well, not, not B intersection C, but B intersection, the result of A union C. And the only thing that's common there is three and five. <clears throat> Pretty good, huh? Oh, Chanel Campbell's like three and five, professor. Why aren't you looking at me, professor? Okay. So, Callie, tell me what part you are lost in the sauce. Honestly, after you start talking about irrational numbers, I just, I lost it. Okay. All right. So, let's go back for a little moment and let's just take a look. So, we, you got the natural numbers, one, two, three, four. Whole numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Integers have negatives and zero. 
And then rational numbers are fractions, right? Irrational numbers are radicals. They're radicals. They're um, values of pi, right? Symbols, right? Uh, Devon, I'm, I'm muting you. Sorry. Um, and then we went into the number line. So a number line is gonna have negative values, is gonna have zero, and it has gonna have positive values. Now, of course, this is very basic. It could be much longer than this, or it could be restricted. But in this case, these are the values that we were using. And we, then we went into interval notation. And interval notation, then we said that whenever we have parentheses, it, the value is not included, but it does exist. So you have to, make sure that you account for the value when you have a parentheses, but you can't use that value for the solution. What does that mean? That only the values in between them are the real solutions. So there was a young lady earlier who said, oh, professor, that's very similar to like when we have greater than or less than sign with no equal sign. And I said, correct because that means that that value is not going to be included because there's no equal sign there, very similar. The opposite is also true when you have a greater than or less than sign with an equal sign, and then that is when you get into the brackets, right? Brackets means that you're actually using the negative three and the four as a solution. So a way to understand this figuratively is that when you have a parentheses, those parentheses are like walls, right? You, the walls exist, but you can't touch them when you have a parentheses. But when you have a bracket, you could sit on the wall and it's okay because you can be included on the wall with the bracket. If you have a parentheses, all you could say is the wall exists, but I cannot touch it. Then after that, we jumped into union and intersection. And we said that the union is when two things get put together and everything now belongs to each other, right? And this is what we call a marriage, as opposed to an intersection whereby you have a prenuptial agreement and a prenuptial agreement says, well, I have my stuff, you have your stuff, and then we only share stuff that is common to both, right? So this is where we ended up here with these examples whereby we have A set, B set, and C set. And then the A set, we have these values. And in the B set, we have these values. And the first example is that intersection. So intersection means what's common to both, not put everything together, only use what's common to both. So what's common to both A and B is three and five. That's why I highlighted. In the next example, it was a union. A union means we're gonna put everything together that A and B has, and we're gonna put them together in the set. So this set here is gonna include A, and A is one, three, five, and eight, and B is three, five, and seven. We're not gonna repeat the, the numbers that are common to both, and that's how we end up with one, three, five, seven, and eight. In the last example that we just did, we had B intersection parentheses A union C, and in this situation, we always do what's in parentheses first. So since we have A union C, we take everything that's in A, which is one, three, five, and eight, and we take everything that's in C, two, four, six, and eight, and we put it together. And we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. There is no seven in the set of A, and there is no set, uh, there is no seven in the set of C. There's only a seven in the set of B. So that is why you don't have a seven here, because it's not included. It's not, it doesn't exist for either set A or set C. Once we have that result, then we can then say B intersection, all these numbers, and B has three, five, and seven. What is common to B and to what's inside the parentheses? And the only values that are common are three and five, because we have three and five here for B. And we have three and five here for the ending result. So yeah, I mean, whenever I could stop and explain, I'll, I'll be able to. 
Um, it won't be always this way, but right now we're good. We're good. So far, so good. Okay, Chill. I kind of understand it now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then after after class, if if there's something else, and that that not only goes for her, but it goes for everybody. If after class, you want to talk about something, and and it's not you know not sinking in, you're like, well, what do you mean by that? And I'm like, okay, let me give you a different example. And then we could we could go at it. Um. Okay, so let me see what is next on the agenda for tonight. Let's see what is on the agenda tonight. Okay, so we're going to look at exponents. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, hold on. All right, exponentes. Okay. Mm, all right, so let me copy and paste this because it's going to be much easier than writing it. Where am I? Here, exponents, because it's part of the homework. Exponents. Alrighty. And again, we're doing this. I normally don't teach this way. I, I usually have a um, um, an iPad, and uh, I'll be writing stuff, and you know, it's so much different. But this is what we're working with today. I thought it. All right, good. So let's paste that here. All right, there you go. Properties of exponents, right? So let, let, let's go over this. So the most important thing that you need to understand for exponents is that exponents have a base. And in this case here, the base is A, and here we have a base of A. Whenever we are um, multiplying bases, we're gonna add the exponents. And that's basically what it says here. So if I have, a base here of negative three, right? This is this is this is the example, right? If I have here a base of negative three and I have another base of negative three, I have the same base, right? Since I have the same base, I'm only going to look at my exponents. Here, my exponents are three and negative one. Because I am multiplying, I am going to add three and negative one. So essentially you are subtracting one from three, right? So what do you get when you subtract one from three? You're gonna get two. So your base is negative three, right? So negative three to the second power is nine because three times three is nine, but you have a negative. We all know the rule guys, right? A negative times a negative is a? Positive. 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 There you go. And a positive and a negative is a? Negative. negative. There you go. Yeah. So don't ever, don't, ever, don't ever forget that. Now, when you're adding is different. A negative plus a negative is a? Negative. There you go. All right, so be, be careful. Now, the other property that you wanna look at is division. So in this example, um, they gave us seven as a base and the same thing for the numerator and the denominator. However, our exponent here for the numerator is nine and the exponent for our denominator is 10. So seven to the nine minus 10 means that I am gonna subtract nine from negative 10, I am gonna get a negative one. I'm gonna explain what happens when we have negative exponents in a few moments, but right now we're just gonna leave it as seven to the negative one, all right? Whenever you have a negative exponent, you're gonna end up with a fraction. You're gonna end up with a reciprocal fraction. So in reality, what's gonna happen here, let's see if I can draw this out. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is going to be equal to what? What do you guys think it's gonna be equal to? It's gonna be equal to one over seven to the seven. first power, which is one over seven so just like we have here five to the negative two we're going to get one because this is the reciprocal one over and this becomes a positive you see how this becomes a positive here that negative becomes a positive and five squared is going to be 25 one over 25 
This is my final answer. This is my final answer for this problem up here. But I wanted to explain what happens when you have a negative exponent. Now, do you remember I said here on the first example, whenever you have exponents, you add them when you're multiplying, right? This gets added. Do you see it? This is different. Whenever you have a parentheses and you have a power inside the parentheses and you have a power outside the parentheses, an exponent, I mean, I should say, you're not going to add them. You're going to multiply them. So you got to be careful. So in this example, we have two to the three parentheses and there's an exponent of two. So essentially what you're saying is two to the third times two, right? Because we're multiplying here. That's going to give me two to the six and two to the six is going to give you 64. I know this is like hard math for some of us. Two times two, two times two, two times two, two times one, two, three, four, five, two times two. This right here, this is four. This right here, this is eight. This right here, this is 16. This right here is 32. This right here is 64. And this is how they got 64. Everybody see that? This Please, is hard. Yes. Can you repeat what you just did? Yeah. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. 32 times two is 64. How many twos do I have here? I have two to the one, 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 two to the one. How many ones do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is equal to two to the six. Right? That's how, that's because I'm multiplying them, right? There's a multiplication sign here. 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 And what does the first property say? Whenever I'm multiplying, I'm adding the exponents. So two to the six. And in order for you to get 64, you're, you break it up. You have six twos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why? Because two to the first power is going to give you what? Two. Two to the first power. Two. Two to the first power. Two. Two to the first power. Two. Two to the first power is two. Two to the first power is two. Right? Trick question. What is two to the zero? Zero. One. One. Zero. Yes. It's one. Oh, it is. I have a question, Professor. Hold on. Uh, What's your I'm name? Sorry. Angelica. Angelica Gutierrez. What is Angelica yeah. Gutierrez to the zero? No, it wasn't. It was, that wasn't the question. <laughs> no, I'm asking you a question. Angelica, what is Angelica to the zero? Just like two to the zero is one. Angelica to one. the zero is? One. There you go. Okay, now, now okay. I can answer your question. Okay, cool. So um, when the exponent is a negative, do we keep it as is then? Yeah, look. Well, when you say as is, let me clarify that because I don't know what as is means to you. Because as, as is... Meaning like we don't put it as a whole number like we did to the 64. No, 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 no. Because if it's a negative, you're going to do a reciprocal, you see? Five to the negative two here is going to give you one over five to the second power. And that because you did the since you did the reciprocal, it is the the two is no longer negative. It is now positive. I see. Mm -hmm. And what about here? Seven to the negative one. Seven to the negative one is one over seven to the first power, which is the same thing as saying one over seven. You see it? It yes, becomes a positive. You. It becomes a positive. You see, this was a negative before, but because we flipped it over, then it's seven to the one. So now here's a crazy question. 
one over seven written as a base. So this is equal to seven to the negative one. And how do I know that? Because I would have to flip this over and by flipping it over, I have to negate the, the one, okay? It goes both ways, you know that, right? Just like yeah, you I go from now. seven to the negative one, you go to one over seven. You could go from one over seven to seven to the negative one. Mm -hmm. Chewy <laughs> All right, let's keep going. I enjoy this much. I enjoy this too much. All right, let's keep going. Um, okay, 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 okay. Mm. Hmm. All right, all right. So let's let's copy and paste this here because that's another example. That's good. Okay, so I'm gonna give you more examples here. Do 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 do. Let's clear this. Okay, so here's another example. So do you remember in the previous example, the power were multiplied, the three and the two for number four, and you get six, two, two to six, and then you ended up with 64. Well, yes. here's, here's very similar, but inside the parentheses, the only powers that are there are one. There's no two, right? So let, let's see how the example plays out. Let's see how the example plays out. So in the example they gave us, we have seven X parentheses to the third. <clears throat> so they're saying this three is gonna get distributed to the seven, and this three is gonna get distributed to the X. So we're, we end up with seven to the third, X to the third. Now, they have this huge number here at 343. How did they get that number? Well, seven to the third is the same thing as saying seven to the first power times seven to the first power times seven to the first power. So seven to the first power is seven. Seven times seven is what? 49. And if I multiply 49 times seven, I'm gonna get 343. That is how they got 343x to the third. Any questions there? Mm -hmm. Wait, but there's more. <laughs> so here they're distributing the power to a fraction. So the n goes to the a and the n goes to the b. So that's the example. So the two here gets distributed to the three. And the two here gets distributed to the denominator, which is X. So you end up with three squared, which is nine. And you end up with X squared. You can't do anything with X squared. And you end up with nine X squared. All right. And um, in this last example here on the bottom, how come I can't move? I cannot move, I cannot move, okay. So I have this two here, it gets distributed to the one, I get one to the second power, I get one. Why do I get one? Because one times one is? One. One, okay, one squared is not two. And then that two gets distributed to the three and the Z, right? So this is how they end up, the two goes, two, two to the second, uh, a three to the second power is nine, and Z to the second power is Z squared. All right, let's look at the last one here that I didn't do. This one right here. So we're taking this two and it gets distributed to the five, meaning that it's gonna get multiplied five times two is gonna give me 10. That's how they end up with X to the 10 here. And then this two gets distributed two to the negative two. So the negative two is gonna give me what? Negative two to the second power means negative two times negative two is equal to what? The positive four. 
Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so that is how you end up with 4x to the 10th. My dogs are getting crazy. Uh, 